The Spurs play the Lakers three times this week. I feel attacked. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Happy Monday morning. It's Thanksgiving week, big holiday week ahead of us. This is Run It Back. My name's Michelle. We're joined by Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons. We'll get to you in a second. And Eddie Gonzalez, co-host of the Etc. We're all separated again. I'm already suffering from PTSD. Uh, Chandler, what'd you do yesterday? Why? No, I just want to know how you spent your Sunday. Was it a fun Sunday? Nice <laughs> <laughs> little double date. Uh, yeah. This double was, date. First of all, <laughs> I have this. I'm healing a stiff neck, is what you see here. Uh, but yeah, I walked. In, I walked into a grenade here. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when I only work three days a week. You guys are giving me too much time on my hands. <laughs> oh yeah, it's our fault. Yeah, yeah. So for people who don't know, this is a this is a fun little video. That's um, Marcus Jordan and Larsa Pippen, and I never thought I'd say that on any kind of form of media in my life. And you were caught in a storm by somebody who just wasn't approving of their love, you know. And that's not right, Chandler. But it does look like you're on a double date, for the record. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to see Andy Dalton masterclass and <laughs> got drug into this. <laughs> I just went. I just went to see my boy Travis Kelsey break records last night, and I ended up in in that situation. But it, you know what? Can't, all can't the control. seats yeah. of all the seats in that stadium, you had to sit in that one. Um, <sighs> all right, let's get to it. We had a big weekend of basketball. Some good, some bad, some ugly. But we're going to start with uh, I think a pretty good move in the right direction. Nets Grizzlies. Oh my God, it's Kyrie Irving. He is back. Nets pull out a win here. Shams, I want to start with you on this one. Um, you know, we have to overreact because it is a Monday, but have they turned a corner? Did you see enough to think maybe this could work? Well, I don't know if it's sustainable, but for now, I mean, how Ben Simmons has played the last three games, ever since that LA trip, uh, where he did not play against the Lakers. There was mounting frustration around the players, the coaches, the front office, and he ends up, what he did in the blog game against Sacramento, I think was a step. Um, and what, what he did the other night in Portland uh, and last night against Memphis, I mean, this is exactly the momentum that he needs going into Philadelphia. We've seen the focus the level that Kevin Durant has displayed, but I think uh, the way Ben Simmons has played, he's always been the motor of this team. I think everyone in the in the organization knows that. If he doesn't bring forth this type of effort, uh, this type of uh, you know energy on a nightly basis, th this team is not going anywhere. So yes, if he plays like this and this is sustainable, then their success will be sustainable. I think you also have to give credit to their role players, uh, U U Utah Watanabe, Royce O'Neal. Joe Harris is starting to play a little bit better. Uh, so th they're starting to get more and more efforts. And we'll see as Kyrie Irving gets back on the floor. You, you can tell he's not fully, fully acclimated yet being back uh, with, with this group. But when he and if he gets back to that form, uh, definitely this team has the making of something that will be dangerous. Yeah. And and to me, this was this is the first time in a while I've seen the Nets have fun. They're out there. They're smiling. Mm -hmm. They're moving the ball. They're laughing like this is kind of the team we expected to see. Um, and, and Ben Simmons, listen, does he look like the old Ben Simmons? I don't think so. We're, we're but this is we're talking effort here. He's just got to play hard like this. He's got to get the ball on, on, on the rebound. He's got to push it and find guys. He's got to be aggressive to get to the rim. And he's showing a little bit of that. Honestly, he's playing a lot better the last three games, but Look, they, they played a very, very depleted team last night. They put a team where Dylan Brooks took 30 shots. Uh, this was a team missing their top three guys. But yeah, I think this they should use this as, you know, motivation. They're getting back. They're getting healthy. They're getting the whole team together. And honestly, Yuta, I had Yuta in Memphis. This dude is such a good dude, hardworking guy, and he's taking advantage of his opportunity right now. So I'm super happy for him. But this is a right step in a, in a direction against a very banged up team. They did what they're supposed to do. Eddie, I know that you personally are more invested in this than anyone up here. How do you feel about what you saw yesterday? Uh, I'm a little hot and cold. What I will say is they do look great. They do look to have a better energy about them. I know the comments Kevin made last week kind of caused a stir, but in his mind and in my mind as well, as we dug into it and, and we, we discussed a little further on our podcast as well, that um, 
you know, he, he's more speaking about the unity of the team and just their ability to fight through what they're going through and guys extending their roles and, and playing beyond what they played before. Uh, I think that includes Ben at this point. He's He's been great the last week. He's not the old Ben, like Chandler said, but he's improving. To me, the Euro step he made against the Blazers was like the first, like, wow, moment of the season for him. And he's built on that. Um, he's attacking he, 22 points yesterday. And, you know, just two weeks ago, it was a joke if he could even score 10. Uh, there is a little bit of like, yes, they're, they're benefiting a little bit from the schedule. They've played a few bad teams, but they did beat the, beat the Blazers on the road. Number one seed in the West at the moment. Um, you know, they got to play who's in front of them. They're probably going to play a weekend Sixers tomorrow as well. But those guys, Yuta Wantanabe leading the league in three point shooting, Kevin leading the league <laughs> in points scored, uh, Nick Claxton leading the league in field goal percentage. The, the team's starting to make a little bit more sense. I do have a little bit of concern about Kyrie, though. He looked a little out of it yesterday, did not look himself. We could call it rust, but he was, wasn't was a big part of the offense, wasn't in the actions. He was sitting in the corner. I've never in my life seen Kyrie just lose his dribble out of bounds. He did that yesterday, and I get it. It's a lot going on for him. It's a lot of pressure on him. It's a lot to handle. Uh, but, yeah, he, he wore it on his sleeve a little bit yesterday, so we're going to need him to snap out of it as well going forward. Yeah, Chandler, are you – are you able to give Kyrie a bit of a break? I mean, it, he was gone and not just gone peacefully and quietly, gone with a lot of outside noise. And literally there was outside noise yesterday before the game started with a lot of his supporters being out there. So, I mean, how, what kind of a window are you giving him, Chandler, before he's back to normal? Yeah, you got to give him some time. I mean, the, the things he are, are, is going through, it's not many people have gone through that. And granted, it's self-inflicted, but you can't really simulate game reps. You can play five on five. You can play one on one against the, you know, the coaches or the managers, but the, you can't really simulate a game action and it's going to take him some time. But I think last night was a perfect game to come back against the banged up team. Everyone was getting involved. They had, you know, six, seven guys in double figures. Kyrie Irving is going to find his rhythm. And, and, and when they do, I'm not counting the nets out. This is a team you got to keep your eye on when Kyrie Irving is healthy and rolling. It, he's a top three point guard, Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant. And these other guys, when they start finding it and they start clicking, I don't want to see the nets, even with all the drama, with all the noise around them, this team can still win an NBA championship this year. So it's, it's nuts. Am I the jerk? Because I just want them to put like a poster up that says this many days since our last <laughs> incident. And we just sort of wait for what Kyrie is going to do next. Am I the oh, jerk? Like what? no doubt. And they'll, 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 they'll be more and they'll keep, I will say they, they they can handle all this adversity. They're definitely going to handle things on the court. They got a bunch of practice. It's 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 going to be. I mean, look, there's always something to talk about, I, and I thank them for that for what we do for a living. But uh, Shams on the other side of things, John Morant didn't play last night. We all saw the the video of him being helped off with the ankle issue. Would you have an update on any timetable for him? It's a grade one sprain. The Grizzlies said, and they announced him as week to week. But I'm told they're looking at anywhere from. Uh, one and a half to two weeks as far as a potential return for John Morant. Could be sooner, um, but they're going to be cautious. They always have been cautious when it comes to John Morant, and, and he's this is not his first ankle sprain. So every time he has it, they make sure they even put out timetables that are even you know more extreme, and then he comes back a little earlier. But right now they're looking uh, at, at that window. And I will say the, the Memphis Grizzlies medical staff, Eric Otter, he's – He's great, but they are super, super cautious with pretty much everybody. Okay. So we're, we're all, you know, this is their nightmare. John Morant going out and he is their engine. He is their future. He is their everything. So they are not going to rush this dude back. Um, and it's smart, too. They have guys that hold the fork down. And and like I said, he's so critical to their franchise that they, they, he's going to he's going to be out for some time, I think. I mean, that makes sense. Every time he jumps up, just kind of hold your breath. Uh, there were there were more basketball games last night. I had the privilege of being at this next one. Lakers Spurs. <laughs> Woo! You know what? I will say this. I had a moment where I, I realized, like, that's the Anthony Davis that everyone gets excited about. Everyone talks about. Everyone wants to see uh, 30 points, 18 rebounds. Chandler, what has changed? And are we getting too quick to, real, to think that he's back back? No, and this is... A like you said, this is the Anthony Davis that we've been waiting on. This is his team. LeBron is LeBron, but LeBron's out of his prime. LeBron LeBron is on his way out. This is Anthony Davis's team, and for them to be successful, he's got to be this version of him. You know, obviously 30 and 18 is a great game, but we're seeing him with LeBron out kind of 
you know, be that monster, do it all for them. And it's helping. They're not playing the toughest schedule right now. They, they haven't had the craziest teams come in there, but no offense to your Spurs, but uh, How dare you? Yeah, <laughs> but this, is the, this is the MVP caliber Anthony Davis that they need. And that makes them an actual threat. So I'm, I'm happy for him. They got to find a way to, to have him continue to do this and go through when LeBron does come back. Cause they're only going to get better when LeBron comes back. But this is this is what he has to do for this team to be successful. Can I can I go like radio show morning show host yes, guy? Like are are the Lakers better without LeBron James? Yes! Uh, they're obviously <laughs> not like even in his advanced age. But what 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 you do see is they're <clears throat> absolutely featuring Anthony Davis in ways they generally don't when LeBron is there. And that's something they're going to have to continue going forward. They have to figure out a way to use AD in the pick and roll as often as they do right now. He's a monster. He's destroyed three teams in a row doing this. <laughs> 30 and 18. He made it look easy. It's for whatever reason, he's also playing with a little bit more physicality over the last week. And that's kind of what you want. When you watch AD, that's what you're always asking for. Like, yo, if, if AD had Giannis's physicality, he'd be the best player in the world. Mm. Um, he's looking like the best player in the world in the last week. He needs to be featured like this in the offense. And the, the thing about it is LeBron can do it. LeBron can absolutely run pick and roll and find him in his spots, whether it's in dunker, whether it's on post-ups, or whether it's rolling to the rim where he's a monster. But he looks great. For the first time in a few seasons, he looks great. He's, he's found his way back into shape. And this is the AD that the Lakers absolutely need if they're going to go, you know, maybe pass the play-in, maybe in the actual playoffs. Stop it. They're going to need that. <laughs> Stop it. I mean, look, they're finally going on the road. And, and, yes, they do play the Spurs again two more times this week, Friday and Saturday. It's a crazy bit of schedule. But do you – okay, so LeBron returns realistically. I know there will be some shifting and some and some changes, but – can AD just stay this version of himself? Because if I'm a Lakers fan, it's fun to watch when he plays like that. There's nobody. I mean, granted, Jakob Pertl, I, I don't even know that that would have done anything last night. He's just unstoppable. But there will be changes, Chandler. And will they be too big to overcome? I don't think so. And I think LeBron is good enough and smart enough to see what's happening, to see him kind of come into his, you know, this this basically this monster he's become the last three games. And LeBron is the one player that, will continue to feed him. He'll continue to go through him. Um, and I got to say the the depth, the, the Thomas Bryant and Schroeder back healthy. I, I kind of made a joke earlier about, you know, Thomas Bryant, that's, he's the savior, but he looked really good last night. And, yeah. and you're seeing the deeper the team goes and, and the, you know, the, the, you know, the longer these bench guys can stay in the game and keep the lead, it really helps these teams. And Schroeder looks good. Austin Reeves looks good. And, and right. yeah, I think, and I think LeBron is the perfect, <laughs> guy to come back to continue to go through Anthony Davis. Thomas Bryant AD in the bubble last night. What's that? Yeah, I was just Thomas Bryant was five of five last night, by right. the way. Yeah. Uh, and so no, they got they got something going on. But yeah, go ahead, Sean. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I saw AD in the bubble and this is the type of performance and, and th that he was having on a nightly basis down there. And then it, it kind of went away and he was injury riddled the following year. And last year we know what happened that Lakers team was an absolute uh, disaster. But how he's performing now is what everyone expected organically to happen, where he would emerge as that face. He's leading them in every major category. When we look at points, uh, rebounds, steals, assists, um, or, or steals, blocks. So he's doing a lot of everything, um, and they need him to be dominant. Uh, yeah, it'll be an interesting week, uh, to say the least. Uh, we got Warriors doing some things, and specifically – Clay Thompson, look, he issued that. I'm not going to say it was a warning, but it was kind of a warning that he would be back. And man, was he 41 points in the win. I know he had words after as well. You know, Eddie, do you want to start here as far as this is a great sign, obviously, but is it Clay becoming Clay or was this a one off? Yo, to need this from Clay and then Steph's obviously incredible game as well with 33. Uh, to beat the Rockets, to get your first road win of the season. <laughs> I mean, I guess I, for, Clay's not going to average 40 a night. Uh, shouts to Clay for uh, looking like the old Clay finally backing up some of the talk. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is like a great sign, but th they do look like they're playing a little bit better. And, and I'm happy for Clay it, it, that he's able to continue to play this media game and tell everybody that they're underestimating him. We're not <laughs> underestimating you, Clay. It's it's way more fun when you play like this. Trust me. 
Oh, I agree. Yeah. You know what? Go ahead, Chandler. Yeah, I'm. Just, I, listen, they played arguably the worst team in the NBA, but I don't care who you play. If you go ten for thirteen from the three and you have forty-one points, that feels good, and that's a great game. And, and listen, Clay is taking criticism for the first time in his career. We always talk about it, and and this is what he has to do to silence the critics. And he's. I hope he builds off this. I don't think it's a one-off. Listen, he's not going to miss forever. He's the second best shooter of all time, but this was a huge step forward for for their team and they again they played a horrific team but this was this was the potential that they have when their shooters are clicking and their bench is still really bad i mean the rockets hung in pretty much all night long because of their bench <laughs> and they're going to need clay obviously not to score 40 but this was a huge step in the right direction for him and, and i'm happy for him well, it, uh, a lot of eyes on the trio of, of Clay, Steph, and Wiggins. 23 threes last night, a little history being made. Um, and I get it. It was their first road win. It almost feels like they just needed to get that first one so we could all move on with our lives. But th- do they look as dangerous as they once were, this particular trio? Is there is there worry from other teams when you see these three coming? Is that back, Chandler? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Listen, these guys are proven. These guys are champions. These guys, these guys know how to win. They're, they're, they're going to figure it out. And I just, I'd like to see Jordan Poole kind of play good with these guys. I feel like it's, it's either one guy or the other. And Jordan's best game was when he started instead of Clay. And now Clay goes off, and Jordan kind of does nothing. So like, I'd love to see them find a way to all kind of mesh together, um, which we haven't seen. But when they do, watch out. Yeah, I mean you. People talk about spacing all the time and the spacing that clay provides. There's no world where a defender is ever just going to sag off clay. So they, they can be dangerous. They they're still dangerous in that sense. And when Andrew Wiggins is playing well, it adds obviously that element and his athleticism and what he does on defense, but that's the end where they're, they're not as dangerous and they're a little defanged. If anything, people are actually attacking clay now. And that was not, seen three four years ago people were calling for his man to screen and and trying to get him on switches so that that's where their concerns really lie they're gonna shoot the lights out you know three four times a week when need be it's it's what they can stop on the other end and again last night kevin porter jr had what 30 points his, himself and you know so it's that's where they have to make up the difference and it's gonna take time they really miss Gary Payton, it, it's crazy as it is to say, you know, this is a role player off their bench, but he's somebody they threw at the point of attack to defend. And it, Portland's still waiting for him to come back and, and to, to to help what they got going on over there, but th- they absolutely miss him on that end of uh, the court. Shams, have we reached the end of the road for the night-night from Steph Curry? Are we done with that yet? The end of the road? <laughs> I think the road is just beginning. I think oh, this is... No. I, 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 <laughs> I love this celebration. And, like, I, I think... I think when, when when Steve Kerr last week spoke about them playing Drew League basketball, I mean, I don't think it was a secret that he was looking at, you know, the shot attempts that Klay Thompson was taking. And what we saw last night was a lot of those same shots he just was making now. And so it's it's not really about forcing shots. I think for Klay Thompson, a lot of those shots that he was missing are shots that he has always taken his entire career. And now, uh, finally, last night, he's able to get some of them to go down. We'll see if that continues. But I'm never going to count out Klay Thompson. I think last night was probably... Amazing for him, confidence-wise, to see those shots go in. It is funny. Those shots are all crazy until you make them, and then you're the best ever, and and that's that's why I laugh sometimes. Mavs lost to the Nuggets. This this game had some weird moments. I'm not going to lie. It was a 98-97, the rare low points that we've seen so far in the NBA. But Luka with a three at the buzzer, uh, that's more than a three. That's like a five. Um, Do we question his shot selection in these moments, Eddie? Do we think that maybe he's not – great at that part of the game yet shot selection i mean i don't know if i question it i question it that one that that was a <laughs> terrible decision down one i don't know what he's barking at the ref about i mean like is he asking for an extra point there i don't know he <laughs> maybe should have came off the ball they ran a they ran a straight double at him in the middle of that um but no i mean this is his shot like he wants to step back he's he's 6 he, he he can shoot from that range but yeah, maybe go for a two there, Luca. You know, maybe come off the right. ball with that quick double. Maybe maybe hit maybe hit Dodo right there and, and see if he can make the shot. But that that's yeah, he's missed three of those now this year. You know, and and we look at their record, but those count. And and we look at seeding next in, in next year and the end of the season, and they're playing a game seven on the road. Yeah, we're not going to remember these shots, but these are these are the reasons why. 
Yeah, you you got to imagine this isn't what Jay Kidd wanted out of a timeout here. With with, I mean, and again, this is this has happened a bunch now. When they throw a double team, he's got to get off that ball real quick, and he's got plenty of time. They got to get something going to the basket here, but it's like the Steph Curry shot we just saw there. That that's a horrible shot, but he made it. So we're not <laughs> so we're not saying right. anything. This is a bad shot, and it's a low percentage shot, and. Look, if he makes it, we're talking about how great it is. But at the end of the day, that's still not the look you want. And he's not going to make a high percentage of those. So you, you got to get something to the basket. You're down one point. Get to the foul line. Get anything other than this, you know, Hail Mary. How demoralizing must that be for teammates when you're just like, no, not again, dude. Not again. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's – it's, and also, like, I question that the, the – at a timeout, the play call. Like, this can't be just a, a, a screen down – 40 footer this can't be what they drew up and if it is it's it's a horrific play call so i, I don't know i'd like to see what the, what he actually drew up and what was the outcome was supposed to be but yeah if, if 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 my teammate's getting double teamed at half court and he's launching shots over that instead of making the extra pass it's it's definitely not going over well uh we've got to get to the topic from the weekend there will definitely be documentaries about Laddergate uh sometime in our near futures <laughs> because what the heck is any of this of course if you haven't seen it by now where have you been it's Giannis in Philly trying to get some extra shots up after the game because he was horrific from the free throw line he's told no it doesn't want to move the ladder he gets frustrated this is all also on the heels of a Montrez Harrell incident on the other end of the court where he was trying to get his free throws up and Montrez literally took his ball from him uh and said this is my court you can't play so guys um just the two people involved in this could not be more opposite ends of the spectrum so where are we are we team Giannis or are we team Harold? Eddie I'm gonna start with you <laughs> uh I, I hate to say it but I'm team Giannis this is really weird I'm not really any team here but this is just such a weird stupid incident like I and more details came out it got worse and it like I love that like you know tough guy Montrez Harrell. He didn't go take the ball from Giannis. That would have been nope. great. He yeah, grabbed right. it out the net and then just start cussing from 30 feet away. I, <laughs> I love that. I love that he cussed his brother out. I love that, like, this is just dumb. I love that the guy put the put the the uh ladder right in front of the rim, like like a true right? a-hole. Like I I just I love everything about this stupid story. It's so dumb. It's uh, so I also dumb. like that Giannis said, I'm not apologizing. I was trying. Giannis, just like go home, bro. Like, just, <laughs> there's usually baskets like in the back. Like, you can practice your free throws somewhere else. This is just insane. Like, it, Chandler, have you ever went out to the gym afterwards and got some shots up? It seems like the dumbest thing of all time. This this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Honestly, because <laughs> number one, I love that Giannis was feisty, and I've I've never seen him kind of turn up like that. I've never seen any negative you know, kind of you right. know, media towards him. Uh, but yeah, this, this is super lame from Montrez hero. I get it. This is his role. This is why he's brought here. He's the tough guy of the team, but like every team does that every team pre post, they share the locker room, the training room. If I wanted to go to the cold tub in Atlanta, when I'm playing them, they let you go. It's kind of a mutual understanding guys have been doing it for years. Guys shoot. To me, this is this this is super whack and petty by Harold. The guy, he's trying to work on his game. He had a bad game. There's another end of the court. I don't know if the hoop was up or not, but this this has been happening for years. Guys always do this pre and post game. Most some arenas, there's a practice facility connected to it, so the, you know the home team can go there and give the guys the main court. Uh, just honestly, I, th I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny, but it's super unprofessional from Harold, and, and, and I think it's, I think it's uncalled for. Oh, I just love the pushing of the ladder. It's such a non Giannis the moment. The, <laughs> the, the sound the ladder made it was oh, just like it, it just even scared Giannis when it hit the deck. Giannis even yeah. looked back. <laughs> but my, my thing, my thing is, look, I understand this guy has a job, and he's going. I think he was egged on a little bit by Montrez, but. I've been watching people tear down arenas for years. They had plenty of time left to go do other things and let Giannis shoot for five <laughs> minutes. I, I just was like, did he not know who Giannis was? Like, what, what was this all about? No. It's I mean, imagine ridiculous. being that guy. You're like, you went home. How was work, honey? I don't know. I had to tell this large man that he could not shoot baskets. Then he threw a ladder at me. Like, there's like this whole, <laughs> I just love, I love everything about it. Um, But yeah, it just seems like boys being boys oh you children i haven't gotten in my mandate yet on the show so now i feel good we got it in there 
You're welcome, guys. <laughs> Look at Chandler's face. He hates me. All right, we're going to take a break. No big deal. Uh, we need to find out if John Collins, is he getting traded? Is he not? Plus, we've got a non-NBA dunk. So good that we're going to include it. And that man has a family. All of that and much, much more when Run It Back comes back. Run it off. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it off. Run it back. Run it off. Run it back. Run it off. Run it back. All right, the Hawks, John Collins opening up preliminary, I think it's hard for me to say, trade discussions. Uh, Shams was a busy weekend for you, a lot going on out there. So what is the very latest on whether or not John Collins could be seeing a new home shortly? It's like every year John Collins finds his name in trade rumors. But this year, I think there is more momentum there has been in past years. Uh, on a potential John Collins trade, I'm told the Hawks have opened up preliminary <laughs> trade conversations. Uh, Utah, Phoenix are two teams. Uh, that have shown uh, desire in him. But this is a guy who is in the second year of a five-year, $125 million contract that he signed um, a couple off seasons ago. So the hope is uh, for, for the Hawks is that potentially they can find a deal that makes his team better. They still want to compete and contend. Uh, but what deal could form, uh, I think, as we get closer to the trade deadline in February, uh, we could see something uh, come up. Uh, a big name on the on the injury list is Tyrese Maxey. Any idea when he'll be back for the Sixers? Out three to four weeks, and it's a small fracture of a bone uh, in his foot. James Harden is a couple of a couple of weeks away, but this is a very very tough loss for the Sixers. Tyrese Maxey has really played at an All Star caliber level so far this year, and it looked like it was only an ankle tweak. And I think that's what people initially thought. Uh, but there was some underlying foot issue uh, that clearly they found in, in further imaging uh, over the weekend. Yeah, that that one is a big one, as well as Damian Lillard. I just I wish we could get through a season without ever having to say Damian Lillard and injury, but bit of a calf strain against Utah. Any updates on that? It's it's another calf injury, and like Chandler knows, like calves, groins, like those are two very tricky areas, hamstrings as well. And so he re-aggravated his calf. It's a different area of the calf this time. So he's already hit a couple different areas of that of that calf uh, muscle that's been bothering him. Uh, he will be reevaluated in one to two weeks. Uh, but I, I think this time around, Portland and Lillard will be more cautious in bringing him back. Last time he was out for one to two weeks, he did come back on the shorter end of that time time uh, on that timetable. Is, I mean, look, they, they're putting together something kind of special up there. I would imagine you want to be conservative with Damian Lillard. You're going to need him down the long run. Um, a, a team that has, I guess, underperformed for what we sort of expected after last year. Detroit, Kate Cunningham, out indefinitely. What do you expect to see here? Well, he's he's been considering a couple options over the last several days. Um, he's feared to have a stress fracture in his shin. And so they're really, really looking at either him resting for an indefinite period of time or undergoing surgery that would sideline him for a significant amount of this season. Um, he's, of course, wanting to resist that option of surgery. That's not something that you want to do at this juncture of the season because it could uh, really tack you out for the, for an extreme amount of this season. Uh, but we'll see uh, when and where they reach that mark. But Cade Cunningham will be out uh, for a while here, I think, either way this goes. That's a big one, unless they're in the Women Yama sweepstakes. And they've already entered that ring. I don't know. I'm not saying uh, this is my favorite part of the show. Thanks, Shams, by the way. I know there's so many injuries going around. You've got updates left and right. Um, but it's time for some fun video. That man has a family. Kenyon Martin Jr. is going to be a big star in today's episode of this because he's kind of all over the place. The first one with the monster block. Gentlemen. Hmm. Oof. That's one of those uh, Bill Russell, keep it in bounds, let your teammates get it yeah. blocks. But, man, this guy is so bouncy. It, it's crazy watching him jump out the gym like this. With the right. left, too, with the with two-foot left-hand block on a footer. Oof. He gets up there. That's, yeah, his, yeah, that's head, nice. his head is literally at the rim. Yeah, that's that must be fun. Put him in, uh, put him in the dunk contest, please. All right, he's still, we still got more. We got more. And the knee to the face of one Dwight Powell. Disrespectful. I mean, it's knee, it's foot, oh. it's everything. <laughs> hey man, get out the way. The way he dunks, the way he, the way he dunks is so violent and angry. Right? He's got some issues L inside. He's working like out. His, like his pops, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pops, pops sitting courtside. He's got to help a little bit, but yeah, he definitely plays just like his dad, which is crazy. But oh. no doubt. I, I, I guess it's I guess it's hereditary. 
that hurt. That, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little bit of extra bicycling. I don't know what he's doing there. That's like a little much, but yeah. And, and, Dad and, then, he acts, and then he acts confused like he didn't just need it to <laughs> right in the face. Right? Like, like he didn't he, just need the dude. How about this one? Mowgli over Giannis. Let me yeah. tell you something. I saw this dude play live and uh, against the Clippers. He is so springy and so like such a quick hop dunker. I don't know how he doesn't have five dunks every game because he does it so <laughs> fast. It's like yeah, a he's one of those. Board. He, he's one of those guys that's like way taller and bigger than you think, and then you watch him run around like like that. He's like a he's like a deer, like a, you know, like a baby deer just right. running around it's, it's all so, elegantly and boom. It's, it's great. It's so quick. Graceful. I'm going to use graceful. Yeah, and like it's over it. Giannis. You get extra points for that. Oh, yay! Happy uh, moment for the Spurs. Jeremy Sohan. Yeah, I, mean, I love it, dirty. obviously. This is dirty. Right? This is This is a real this smack in the this face. Is a, yeah, <laughs> this is a real body. This is He doesn't even have to touch the rim. He throws it in, which is even cooler in my eyes. He did a nice little spin move to get there. And one. I like this kid. Yeah, this kid. And he's finding a little role with the kind of the bad mm -hmm. boy, the, the Dennis Robin vibe. I like it. <laughs> I mean, I'm taking points away for What? For the no rim. But like, like, it's just like a super layup, right? But he did get smacked dead in the face. So it cancels out. A mm. super <laughs> layup? I mean, Eddie, <laughs> we can fight if we need to. <laughs> Look, that's like a, like a powerful <laughs> floater. Like, Fine. Uh, Mikael Bridges. Ooh. In Clay's face. Oh, you can pick on. This is awesome. Clay of all people. Clay's going to remember yes. this as he keep, continues <laughs> to remind us every time he speaks. He's going to remember all this. I really hope we get to this playoff series because that's kind of just how the Warriors get revenge and they just blow them out four times. But this is I great. Will, like, I will say, oh, too, God. usually usually players only turn back around and do this type of stuff if someone from the bench is chirping at them. Yep. Ah. So you got to imagine he's just kind of clapping back because someone said, like, oh, he's missing or he's off or brick or whatever they said as he's shooting, and clearly he took offense to it. But that's there's no way he just did that after <laughs> making the shot. It's too close to the face. I feel like that's... Mm -mm. And That's Bridges, a even like, Bridges isn't that guy either to just do that out of nowhere. Def <laughs> someone, someone definitely popped off as he was shooting that, and he didn't like it. Oh, I love it! I love it. We get a little college hoops. This is, uh, you know, it's special if we're willing to do this. Arkansas is Trayvon <laughs> Brazil, but I feel. Yeah, this was nuts. This dude, is God. what is your deal? <laughs> What's crazy is I don't know this dude, but someone's going to take a flyer on this guy for like training camp or summer league based off this duck. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I'm sending scouts to the next, to the next Arkansas <laughs> game on this yeah. alone. Like watch number two and tell me, like, just let me know. Yeah. This That's like right. the full extension cockback. That's nasty. His that draft was, stock, yeah. his draft stock went up on one possession. I yeah, just want to do it once. More him. What must that feel like? And so embarrassing, South Dakota State. So embarrassing. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, are we panicking on LeBron? And could the Pistons beat the Celtics with a six on five advantage? I don't know. Run it back next. Run it back. 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 Dwight Howard is back in Taiwan, but got some monster 25 rebounds. That seems like a typo, guys. What do we think? Is this going to be a trend? Will more will more dudes go to Taiwan if this takes off? Seems to be having fun. I mean, there's <laughs> there's there's no one in this league with, with his size and physicality. Um, yeah, I expect he's going to dominate this league. And I don't I don't know I don't know if it's going to get like NBA guys like hyped back on him, but like it's I, Taiwan is an, an incredible place. Their fans are nuts. It's, they love basketball. He's going to be an absolute megastar there, but. No, like he's not. Like he, this is what he's. Of course, he's going to do this. He's seven foot two sixty, and he's playing against a bunch of guards. Okay. My okay. stupid, my my stupid like fan mind. I'm like, if I'm a player, I'd do this. I'd do this every summer. I'd go to one of these leagues and See? just dominate like a video game. I remember Kobe was going to play in Italy, and I was just geek. Like I want to. I. <laughs> I want to see all this, you know, chicanery. I want to see all the shenanigans. Put an NBA guy in a college game. Like, let's just do it all. I want to see it. So, oh. This is hilarious to me. This I man know, it, took, it, it, he it, took it, 10 threes. 
He took 10 <laughs> threes in a real professional game. Is that a lot, Chandler? Is that a lot for Dwight Howard? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yes. He, and he made two of them, which is crazy. And that's why he took 10, because he's feeling himself. Right. It makes total sense. <laughs> Uh, we got we got panic button time. Um, I just I, I more Dwight Howard video. Keep it coming. We're gonna do some panicking here. And R.J. Barrett Chandler is the first one up. Here are some numbers. Okay, shooting twenty six percent from the field and eight percent from three over his last five games. Is it panic button time on R.J.? Yeah, that's that's not good. And and here's why because he got the big extension. He's finally playing with a pure point guard in Jalen Brunson, and he's expected to take that next step. And, and he just simply hasn't. He's inefficient. He he's he's too good to just be a role player. And they're paying him to be a star player. And and he's he's neither. He's kind of in this Tobias Harris role where he's he's really like a three four option on a contending team, but they're paying him to be the guy. And he's not the guy he's a streaky scorer. He, he has potential and I think he could figure it out, but I'm hitting the panic button because you know, again, he's playing with Jalen Brunson who should be making the game easier for him, who should be making him getting open looks and being way more efficient than he is. But, uh, Ooh. I, I, I'm panicking and and this is classic Knicks where it's just, they can't catch a break, but he can't be shooting these type of numbers, Ooh. you know, handling the majority of an offense for a team if, if they want to go anywhere. So that so, chart yeah. was ugly. That was an ugly, ugly red chart. A lot of red. red. A, lot, a lot of red. Red is not good. It is not good. Uh, you're up, Eddie. LeBron James. I mean, granted, hasn't been playing, but when he has played lowest field goal percentage since his rookie year, career worst from three uh, and the plus minus, if you're into that at negative six, minus 6.1 hitting panic button on LeBron. Yeah. I mean, look, he's, this is year 20. There was eventually going to be some slippage. You could see it. He's had a bunch of different leg injuries over the last couple of years. He's not injury prone, but these injuries happen and they matter and they stack up. Um, he's settling for a ton of threes. If you watch him, he's just not driving as forcefully as, as he used to. Um, and the, the the knock on LeBron has always been that he's never had a consistent jumper. And at some point it was going to hurt him. He's going to pay for it. And it's now, you know, and now his game isn't aging as gracefully. So yes, there is a little bit of panic. You just gave him a bunch more money for a bunch more years. Uh, you you, you got to worry a little bit. And I joked earlier, like, yo, are the Lakers better without him? They're not obviously, but, <laughs> that has to be a little alarming as well. They they have been playing some pretty good ball over the last couple of nights. So, yeah, I think panic is the right word for what's going on with LeBron. Yeah, you you never want your other guys going off like they've been going off when when another star guy goes out. You would love ideally for them to do that together, and it's it's it is a little concerning that it's taking LeBron to sit to Anthony Davis to kind of blossom into that star monster that he's been the last three games. So. Panicking is, uh, I mean, I'm not panicking. It's LeBron James, but I'd love for them to figure out a way to all do it on the, on the floor at the same time. Would you, Chandler? Would that be fun for you if they figured that, would that be out? Fun. <laughs> yeah, that would the be league, great. <laughs> <laughs> the league is better when the Lakers and the Knicks are good. No, they keep telling me that. I just disagree. Uh, <laughs> Chandler, after the Bucks started the season 11 and 0, they've lost four of their last six. Are we panicking on the Bucks? No, I don't think so. I don't think you hit the panic button when you have the best player in the world and you have another top 15, top 20 player in Chris Middleton that's coming back. Uh, when they're at full strength, I fully expect them to you know, be a top two team, if not the best team in the East. Um, I, I look for them to kind of make a move. I know they're kind of shopping Grayson Allen. I know they're in the mix for Jay Crowder. And this is a team that made a move for P.J. Tucker and, and ended up winning the championship. So I'm not hitting the panic button because – push comes to shove, you have to beat Giannis four times in, in the playoffs, and hmm. that's really hard to do. And we've seen Giannis mad now, and I like it. I like seeing Giannis <laughs> mad. I'm glad you brought up P.J. Tucker. That was a nice segui because, Eddie, you're getting P.J. Tucker. Hasn't scored a point in his last three games. Has only scored five in his last five games. Uh, panic button time on P.J.? Uh, yeah. Uh, this was an alarming contract in the summer. I, I'm not Oh. Exactly sure whether they gave him three years and a player option. You grab the ankle piece that that you felt that one a little bit. Good thing he missed. Um, but yeah, I mean, his the entire point of him was to, to defend in the corner and make threes, and he's not making any shots. And he's not as great defensively. He has a player option for his third year. He's making ten million a year. Uh, you know, you 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 lost some draft picks for supposed collusion going on there. 
Yeah, you got you got to panic a little bit. This you you need him. You need him if you're going to be a great playoff team. And Chandler, ouch, help me out here. I, I I just explain this to me. Is it bad to not score points in games? <laughs> it's it's not good. I mean, it's it's <laughs> unless you're doing what she's kind of. He's that junkyard dog role player where he's supposed to be the lock up tough. You know, taking charges, diving on the floor. He's supposed to be that guy, but not scoring playing 20 plus minutes is, is pretty hard to do. It's a long time. I mean, Eddie, I feel like, I mean, hear me out. We could at least get two points, right? At least two points. Uh, I'm yo, some of them shots he's getting, I'm going to make some, I'm going to look a little crazy, <laughs> but I'm going to get one of them. I promise you. I knew it. And that's the confidence we're looking for. Uh, Chicago bulls have lost four in a row, six of their last seven Chandler. Are we hitting the panic button on Chicago? I am hitting it a hundred times. Listen, I think it's Zach Levine is beefing with Billy Donovan. Vucevic just I feel like is not finding his rhythm. And the last time we hear about Lonzo Ball, it's like it doesn't seem like he's close to returning at all. And the worst of all, the magic the magic get their pick, which I think is top four protected. So they they have no incentive to lose and and they are struggling mightily. Anytime a player and a coach aren't vibing, it trickles into the locker room. This this is a this is a sticky situation and, and I'm definitely I'm hitting that thing. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to. You know, the 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 class of the Eastern Conference is a good tier or two above them. They know that. This time last year, I think they were the, the second best record in the league. Uh, and it's it's it, it's complete opposite now. They missed Lonzo Ball, but yeah, the Zach Levine stuff is alarming. Look, Zach, you played like crap that game. I, I guess your your coach he does have the option to bench you, but to keep going at him like this as he has is pretty is pretty crazy. You hate to see that if you're a fan, or maybe if you're in the locker room. Like, yo, our our star player, our highest paid player, and our coach, he's not exactly getting along. Um, yeah, I mean, they're going to get to a point of push comes to shove because, like you said, that pick is going to Orlando unless they're really bad and the ping pong balls go their way. So it might behoove them to go all in with the losing. And we're finally getting our tank watch. Our tank teams are not tanking. It's so happening. we might get a surprise tank. We need it. I'm, I, I need to see that. I need to see that really bad basketball. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely happening, and it's including some teams, you're right, that I don't think we um, we saw that we're going to be part of tanking. Convince me time. Some of these are some outlandish ideas, Chandler. Convince me that the Detroit Pistons, Detroit, could beat the Celtics in a seven-game series if they were allowed to play with six <laughs> starters against Boston's five. Yeah, this one, I mean, I think they'd beat them four. Oh, I think they'd sweep them. Four. <laughs> yeah, this is disrespectful. We're talking <laughs> about we're talking about professional <laughs> basketball players here. I don't care how bad their record is, I don't care if they're tanking. They could just keep one guy cherry picking the entire time and just throw it down to them. They're going to, they should sweep this series and it shouldn't even be close. I don't care what team it is. Worst team ever against the best team ever. Six on five with NBA players. I'm taking the team with six. God, no, not even a hesitation. All right. No and he's way. just over there laughing. That's great. No way. It's disrespectful. Very, Very disrespectful. disrespectful to the Detroit Very. Pistons. Yeah. By the way, for the record, don't at us. We didn't come up with that one. So if you're mad, Detroit fans, you, I'll give you the tweet later. Uh, Eddie, convince me the number of free throws that a team attempts should be capped. Yes, please. I'm I tired like of watching Joel Embiid shoot free throws. I'm tired <laughs> of watching Joel Embiid fight to shoot free throws. I also think about like the strategy of, like, yo, we have two free throws left for the last 12 oh, minutes of the game. Love it. How do we parcel them out and all that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I you get the ball in bounds. I don't know how you would you do this, but I love watching guys play basketball. I don't watch <laughs> them. I don't love watching them stand there on lines and shoot the ball unimposed. So yeah, let's let's see. Let's see if this works. I actually would like that because the end of the Spurs Clippers game on Saturday night, there were, it took 15 minutes because of the free throws and it was a Chick-fil-A Spurs missed two in a row. You all get, it was just, I mean, look, it was fun because they never got their free sandwiches, <laughs> but it took forever. No more free throws. Uh, Chandler, convince us, convince me. The MVP should be voted on by players. Yeah, I think this should actually happen because, I mean, listen, the players are the ones out there playing. As a player, I know who's the best player. I know who contributes to to winning. I know who means more to their team as opposed to media who has, you know, their own narrative and, and whatever reason what they're voting for. But, like, 
it, it, like a guy like LeBron James, he's been the best player in the NBA. You know, he should have way more MVPs. He's the best player. At, and, and when the, when the media votes, if the players were voting, Jokic would not have won the last two, you know, back-to-back mm. MVPs because yeah, he had a great season, but if we're voting the best player, it doesn't really show like players know that players are out there on the court. They know who can really hoop. They know who's that guy. And, and they know it best. They know it better than fans. They know it better than media. So I think it should be. I think, you know, these are the guys that are on the floor. These are guys that are physically seeing it and living it and playing it. Uh, I think it should be voted by the players. I wonder though, would it, would it turn into a popularity contest at all between guys? Like if guys don't hang out with a certain guy, but he's amazing, would he lose votes because of that? I don't it know. Could, could, there, there could be some like petty, like I'm not voting for James Harden because, you know, Giannis hate, like Giannis hates James Harden. Yeah. He's not going to vote for him. So there would be a little bit of that, but yeah. Cause how do you keep it like honest if the players? Uh, are yeah. Gonna... We're just <laughs> humans guys. We're just humans yeah. taking a quick break. When we come back, we're going to give it, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try to make you rich once again, Chandler and Eddie with their on the fly NBA parlay next. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah. Yeah. Run it all, run it back, turn it all, run it back, run it. All. How about this? A game shown on FanDuel Plus on Sunday. Victor Wimanyama, 30 points, nine rebounds, five oh. blocks. Uh, his next game will be on Saturday at two Eastern on FanDuel Plus. I, it just it doesn't look real. <laughs> This is this Where's is one the of the craziest fella? layups like, I've ever seen. First of all, the way he handles the ball, and then is this right? like a floater? Is this a finger roll? I don't even know. I've never seen a layup like that. <laughs> Look at this. Look how high it was off the glass, too. Like, oh my! It's like on, a, bro. It's like a, a teardrop. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't. And this, he got the he had the double team like, coming, which happening? is the worst the worst double team in the history of basketball. But. <laughs> It's this is like a opposite hand, opposite foot, like push shot. I, I was that was weird. It's would love uh, to see you know, the left, who, big fella. I have whoever my gets that guy. Now. I mean, you do? Okay, fair enough. Uh, Eddie's the only one that's the guy. Shaking <laughs> left. Four leg parlay. Yeah, we're right. gonna get it. Okay, I, Eddie, you're first. Your first two legs go. All right, look, I really want us to do well here, so I did some research. Hawks, Cavs, I'm going over. They both average 115 points a game. It should be a great okay. game, by the way. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. There. What's your uh, What's number two for you? Uh, what did I go with? Oh yeah, Jazz <laughs> underdog versus the Clippers on the road. I <laughs> I I'm picking the Jazz. I want, I think they're gonna win outright. Uh, giving these guys okay. three points is kind of crazy to me. Lori and Lori, we trust. In Lori, we trust. Chandler, number one for you. Uh, I got the Bucks and the Blazers under with Dame out. Mm, I don't think they're going to score a lot of points. I think okay. the Bucks are going to slow it down at home. I think this one's a lock. Lock? Oh, great. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then, like and then number like, four. And then I like the Knicks plus two and a half. I honestly, I like the Knicks to win this game. Again, they, they're they they're trying to win. The Thunder aren't. Like, there's no re- – they have no re- – they have a better team. They have a better roster. Like, enough. Like, go and, and win the game. Okay, so there it is. These are the four legs to this parlay. Um, if you bet 20 bucks – you could win 248. I don't know why I'm laughing, guys, because at some point, <laughs> one of these is going to hit. I got a good I feeling. I can't wait. I can't. I, I got really... a good feeling about this one, too, but I'm worried about Shea Gilgis I... Alexander now. Like, Chandler might have said Do we? You know what we running... should be doing? <laughs> we should do the four leg parlays and then a side bet of which of the legs is going to be the one that ruins it for the entire part. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see a, I'd like to see a running total of who's been the one that's messed up. Cause I feel like it's, oh, I feel like it's we, me. Okay. We we're going to get a side of like, if you picked against us and everything, would you win? And, and how I rich bet they've won before. How rich Somehow, would you be way. if you didn't listen to us? <laughs> you know what? We keep missing them. That's coming up next. That's, that's for us. We will be back tomorrow. Enjoy your Mondays y'all. <laughs>